funny. Remember the word echo chambers? I think it was like a couple of years ago. I think it's going to pick back up again, but we were, we were just talking about Reddit before a second ago. I'm like, well, Reddit is an echo chamber. Facebook, all these, like any platform is its own echo chamber of thought, your own algorithm. If you're on TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, wherever, I feel like TikTok, it adjusts your algorithm really quickly for what you're, you're seeing. What do y'all think about that? I think Reddit, yeah, you, you curate your, your echo chamber while TikTok yeah, a little bit better. creates your echo chamber. And that's what, that's, what's always interesting. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about before jumping on here too, is the, the departments of home builders. Like you need to, you need to branch out. Like you yeah. need to create these other sources of information so that you're not just like, no, no, no. Everyone thinks the same thing I do. It's like, well, do they, do they really? Or even like a builder 20 group could essentially, essentially mm. like a strong individual or someone who's persuasive can convince a group to feel or think a certain way. And that over the long run creates like this echo chamber with TikTok. It's your interactions with the content. You then start to get content that you want to see because you're watching it or not. Maybe, not, maybe not even you want to see, but TikTok wants you to see to stay on the platform longer. TikTok wants you to see. TikTok wants you to see Facebook. You then start to ignore things you don't want. Maybe unfriend people or don't follow people that you're like, no, oh, this person's an idiot. I don't well, now, see what they now have. my marketplace, I clicked on Keep two going. houses recently on Facebook, oh, just look at them and it was like, marketplace. Get. I get two notifications. Exactly. I get two notifications for houses and now it's sending me yes. notifications of, Hey, I know you looked at houses. So now here are some houses. So it is, it is always interesting how either you, you have to serve the information to yourself and search that out or it gets served to you. So controlling that flow of where you get that data from is more important than ever. So is this podcast its own echo chamber? Just <gasps> kidding. I could say that, right? That's good. We, we tell people, we're like, don't let this yeah, be the only podcast you listen 100%. to. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're, we joke, we're like the worst marketers that are the best marketers. Cause we're like, don't, don't get comfortable. Like, and like, you know, bring us topics too. Like we'll talk about things because Andrew and I, and Beth, you know, we, I like do you convert because we don't all agree on the best Things sometimes. I enjoy that and when we don't agree. I like, like when we fun. argue. And and then you know what we do? I just find it's joy in arguing. <laughs> I get dopamine when we argue. And it's Especially great. when I get to argue Andrew. That's yeah, he is fun. I enjoy it. I don't even know we're arguing and we're arguing. Yeah. See, I'm that delusional. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a great. it's a really good time. But here's the thing. They're allowed to go listen to other podcasts, but we're their favorites. That's yeah. what I have to do. Yeah. Give us the reviews, the call us out by name. I don't know if we ever asked for reviews, but if you do one, that, that would be amazing. Where do you even well, I know people you? listen because the one time I ever, I, I said the word Tupperware wrong, it like went Tupper, viral. Tupperware. Tupperware. So, oh, it's so funny. funny. It's, it's so, so funny. Tupperware funny. Better. My friends bring it up all the time. I'm like, damn. And Andrew and I argued for like 10 minutes on a podcast about crayon. 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 It's crayon. But it's anywho, weird. let's anywho, not go down that rabbit hole last again. Last distraction. Who's seen the new Inside Out movie? Mm -hmm. Not me. Not yet. I don't want to cry. Seen the first one. I did. Uh, we've been watching the first one because the first one is streamable. Yes, I am that person, and we are that family. We're not going to go to the movie theater. Oh, what? I'll. Do you need some Venmo? I'll send, what, send me your Venmo. <laughs> okay. I mean, yes, I'll, I'll but it won't be used on movie tickets. It's probably perfect for your oldest one, Inside Out too. Um, and I think it's great. Yeah. Like I was adult, I was like, man, I have a lot of feelings right now watching this movie. This. Mm -hmm. Man, my eyes are burning. This is really strange. Like, what is happening here? Like, it was, it was, it was done well. It felt like therapy. Um, that's what it felt like watching the movie. It was a therapy session. That's like, good I mean, for you. Some lessons. I'm it's, happy. You're happy. I'm, I'm so happy for you for that. I love that for you. I that's love funny. that for you. I now, if it's Spider Man, you. I will buy a ticket and I will go. You know, Spider Man. I'm so confused. There's too many. It's like a menu at a diner. I don't know what to pick. There's too many choices. The Spider Man movies. There's all of these. I don't oh, know. They're what They're all to good. Do. I just press they play are. and enjoy. I've never Which seen that. Second. Like, who's, that skinny, who's that skinny second one with like Emma Stone? Andrew Garfield. Yeah, I'm out. I like Emma Stone. She's I watched everyone but that. She will be at the summit in Chicago. Emma Stone. Emma Stone? That's not true. And, yeah, please Definitely. don't share that rumor. Someone's going to pick up the AI true. on this. Where did that come from? You well, lost um, me. Anyway, should, uh, we, should we get started? We should get started. Yeah, let's get started. Welcome to episode 342, 342. I'm Andrew Beek, and with me today is Jackie Lipinski and Ben Hello. Russell. The Did we take only. out Ad Doctor? <gasps> Sometimes it's there. It's made up. It's made up. I, I went online. I got a certificate to be a doctor. It was $9.99 plus shipping and handling. So it's made up. It's made up. I'm just kidding. 
I apologize. Oh, that was story time. You know, Jackie, I like so our notes, just so ever know we I like some transparency. There's like four words for our story time, but Jackie, you have like six words, but I yours looks fun. I have yeah. no idea what it is about, but I, well, I think we should hear that first. I could start I could start with that one. It was funny. I was looking, I was like, wow, this is the first time I don't think ours are gonna relate, but I think we can make it happen. Um so yeah, challenge my accepted. husband challenge accepted. My husband and I were were just having lunch. And I was thinking about when we moved to the state of Washington from Addison, Illinois, and it was one factor that actually happened. Um, it was 20, it was like the winter of 2013 and it got down in negative 32 degrees and you could throw That's a cup of right. water. Yeah. In mm -hmm. Chicago, you throw a cup of water in the air, you know, it turns into a cloud. And I remember just walking in back into my condo and saying to my husband, I think I hate it here. And, and he was like, uh, he's so like, ah. well, he, he, you know, we're just like, why, why do we wake up at five in the morning to brush off our cars, to drive to job? I was like, this does not seem like a long-term place that I want to raise a family and I want to live at the, so, cause when Andrew always says there's five D's of moving divorce, downsizing diapers, diamonds, and death. And I was thinking, well, what, what was that then? And I was like, maybe discomfort like discomfort mm. in the weather and with like so that. many things, because there is a, um, uh, I think climate change is being recognized in Redfin and Zillow and flood zones. And there's all these things being turned on of considerations for where you're building and heat. And I know there's a heat wave happening in I think like 80% of the country, except for Washington this, this week. Um, and so you're really I was just selling Washington here. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on over. We have mountains. Um, it's expensive here. Don't, don't move here. Uh, but one of the things that I, we moved and I, I didn't regret it. And so it was the discomfort of the climate that actually made me move. And it made me think of these, um, people who bought and, and their discomfort as it grows. And as these weather related things happen, and how can, um, home builders or other people think of positioning information positively. So if you know that you have a very mild weather location, or you offer certain amenities not available in resale homes, um, you know, lean into that too, especially, I think we've talked about not that there's crisis marketing, but if there are unique things happening, like if there was a heat wave, I would almost be like, is your, you know, some kind of campaign around that to make it top of mind via email or, or some kind of the sales team following up with some kind of information about that. If they have detailed information from where the, the discomfort of what that person is moving from. So just food for thought. I was like, I feel like there needs to be one extra D in the like default I think that's real. reasons of people moving. Definitely. Or even like, uh, discomfort, but also, Hey, here's what our more energy efficient home performs yeah. like on a discomfortable day. Um, or Josh yeah. on our team in he's Florida. in Pittsburgh, Florida. in Florida, like he's in Pittsburgh. He has no AC Josh on our team. Oh so no. He's like, I have to go to a coffee shop. It's terrible. I'm, like there just isn't AC like in his house. He, he doesn't need it usually. So it's no big deal. Um, but yeah, in Florida, yeah, we're, we're used to the hot. They were talking about like, oh, our heat bills this. I'm like your, your heat bill. Like we go from like, it's 65 outside. We want it 68 inside. So it's, it's almost free running heat, um, where I'm at. That's true. That's good. Discomfort. Yeah. Lean into it. Um, talk about it. Give them something to talk about. Let's go. I like that. I'll go real quick because this is a fun one. So monday.com, mm. the project management software. A mm. while ago, I was like, I need my own task management software. So not project, but just tasks. Like I have like two legal pads on my desk, which I found out like later, like that's the better way to manage myself. I need to like rewrite what I'm doing all the time. Otherwise I forget what I'm doing or what I should be doing. But during this time, I was like, oh, I'll try Monday out. And I need I had this need for like a recurring task to happen. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, check budgets for X, Y, Z. Every Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, do this. I was like, man, that's what I want. But the way Monday was working, I believe it was Monday, um, it would just lay out all the tasks and it looked obnoxious. It was like Monday the 17th or whatever, 2024, all up to 2025. Well, that's like 52 tasks. It looks ridiculous. I'm like, this isn't going to work. So then I canceled it and I was feeling extra social that day. I'm like, I'm going to say why I canceled. Like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Blah, 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 which is not usual. 
well, like two weeks ago, they sent me an email. Upscale makes apps for Monday as like an add-on. Um, I'm, if, mm. if you use it, you're familiar with what I'm talking about, but you could add on like apps to it. And Upscale is the, the company. They sent me an email. They're like, hey, Andrew, we took your feedback and we actually made this a product feature oh. for Monday. I'm like, oh, I feel like so Like directly to you? Like, directly give me to royalties. Me. Where are my Give royalties? Give me royalties. I'm done contributing to society for the rest of this year. I'm putting in PTO for you know, 100 or something <laughs> out of the days. I'm done. I am great. Look at me, um, which is, I do think I'd sign back up for, but it's pretty cool. So I put the blog post in um, in the teamwork and notebook, but it's automatic scheduling for recurring tasks has arrived. Yours truly, Andrew Peak. They didn't call me out. <laughs> they should have. Um, but I'm like, oh, maybe I will reconsider them. But I'm like, how cool is that? That's a really cool feature. Uh, it's not a feature. Yeah. I mean, it is a cool feature because yeah. I wanted it. They didn't have it. But that they actually took the time to reach back out and go, oh, well, we'll message the person that kind of had this idea and sent it over, which is good for them because everyone listening, I'd say half the people listening use some type of project management software. Mm -hmm. Monday is definitely in the top three, I would say, like Asana, mm -hmm. Monday, um, ClickUp is up there. Then you have Trello. But like or monday might actually be the most popular one well, it's you know definitely it's, asana and monday you know what's funny is uh samantha kellenberger on our team you know certain builder partners need certain mm -hmm. things and i think she works in all of them she told me and i was like you should do a comparative you should give us feedback on pluses and minuses of all of them because if we're just working in lunch once a month for having to navigate <laughs> all those after a while they're all the same it's just yeah. like the interface yeah. is a little bit different um or they're like there's one I don't like, and it's because all their colors are like white, off white, alabaster. They're like almost all white, so you can't really see the form buttons. And I'm, they I'm used like, to I be Basecamp. I used to use Basecamp if you remember That's that strange. way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then I think it the design just leaned too forward into like we want the aesthetics. Yeah. I was like, I can't tell what I'm doing at I, certain points. So I'm out. I want Windows 95, like hook me up. <laughs> like, That's what oh, I want. Yeah, I want harsh corners and like 16 bit colors, all that 8 bit colors. Let's go. So I thought that was cool. I'm like, oh, interesting. It is nice. That story you... that brand, they listen to me. I, I think, so think that's a good lesson for our builders that take the time to survey their customers prior to releasing a new development. Oh. Because one of the things that we talk about is the psychological effect of answering a survey for a community that's not yet built, providing your input of what it is that you're looking for, mm -hmm. because then you feel some sort of sense of ownership over that. I saw it in pharmaceutical marketing where when we did pharmaceutical market research and the amount of people that would open up during the focus groups that we talked about, it was because they felt hope. They felt hope that they were impacting um, the performance or like influencing mm -hmm. how a drug is presented out to the world that could potentially help their family members and um, or themselves. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity for the builders that are taking that extra time to survey their customers and find out what it is that they're looking for to then be like, hey, thank you so much. This was really helpful. We're happy to report that we are going to offer four-sided brick in this community because we, you told us it was important to you and it's a, what it's you're expecting at this price point. Like that's a great extra yeah. next step. So I love that story, it's Andrew. What, five minutes? I mean, it's a lot of, it's what's crazy is like all these things, at least to me, it takes maybe like think about it they they saw the, the the future request come in they have a meeting they kind of vote on them i don't know what they do but like mm -hmm. they have a process for like what would be the next feature with the product to improve upon who originated who originated the idea etc it's all right there mm -hmm. and it's like maybe a minute or two for the email like hey go ahead and email the person say we're launching it thanks but like the mental energy is yeah at least to me a lot to like oh, i have to email this person i don't even know this like so however this person does did it like great, but, or they truly value it as a company. And it's actually like zero energy because they're yeah. like, we love our customers. Like this is like, we leave them live and breathe this stuff. This is, this is awesome. Uh, but I think that's why a lot of those things get kind of pushed to the side because it's not the time it's the like, oh, that's something extra I have to do on my day. And maybe I, from leadership, it's not valued. And so then they don't value it. I think that is the positive of being a smaller builder is those hard, like those easy wins with relationship building. And so we did that, you know, there was, I think a floor plan called the Rosario. And so every year or so we, we tweak it just such because we listened to the feedback of the people who moved into the Rosario and we're like, oh, okay. Like 
this is what they want different in it. Or, Hey, people moved in and then customer service went in and the people were like, Oh, I wish this would change. And then we'd listen to that. And so we probably could have done more surveys of, um, Hey, you live in a res- survey, all the people who moved in a Rosario say, if you can change one thing about this. And then when you do it, invite them all to it as well. And just say, look, this, we changed this due to your feedback. Thank you so much as past homeowners of this floor plan. And, and also just talk about why it's, you know, what sets you apart. It's that building up of the relationships and that feedback and the information. And again, smaller builders can do that way faster than larger builders, which I think they don't give themselves as much credit for sometimes like, Oh, we can't be as big. It's like, you're not supposed to be as big, be better. So and if they right. don't have the time to put together a whole survey and pull the list and to do that, how else can they get that feedback? Mm. Yeah. They you have have customer have, service or like have, have the conversation with the salespeople yeah. or get out there those people. and be like, work those people get out there and work a model, you know, sit in a model, hear the conversations, mm-hmm. hear what the customers are saying. I had the pleasure of selling on site for a year, but I got to hear direct feedback of all of our floor plans and the, the things that actually stood out to them. And they actually loved, um, selling out of those communities. And it was really helpful making decisions and, and finding areas of influence as a marketer, because I could be like, when we would go through the value design meetings, I had a seat at the table during those conversations. And I would say, no, you can't remove that dormer. That's what everyone loves about this plan. You, you can't remove that front porch area because it is like the true selling point and what makes it stand out on the facade. Like having those conversations and being able to quantify it in a survey mm. format is even better. But if you have that feedback loop live in some capacity from on the ground networking back up to marketing, it just makes the company better, marketing messaging better, product line better, everything, customer experience. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I was just telling Beth uh, earlier, Andrew, I sent a marketer, a self-assessment tool. And one of the questions we asked, I asked them is one out of 10, how often do you get out on the field? And they went, they didn't give me a number. They just went, oh man. So I think, I think some people know that. No, they just wrote, you know, no excuses. I know I need to get out more and that direct feedback would be helpful. But our computers are so comforting as marketers. They are. I'm, um, I don't know if this counts. Uh, this is my random story. I'm going to, this is, this feels so crazy in a couple of weeks going to a community that's somewhat local to me that a lot of builders build in Epperson, the crystal lagoon. Uh, I was the first crystal lagoon in the United States, Epperson. And we're doing like a day there as far as like, like a vacation type thing. And we're, we're spending the weekend like around, around there, but I'm like, this feels so weird. Like I'm, I'm going to be chilling with there's in my homes over that way. There's I think all the big builders are yeah. in that community. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Random story. But Beth, you have a real story, not me talking about swimming in a giant pool. Mm. No one wants to hear from you, Andrew. Florida things. <laughs> Stop talking about Discomfort. Florida. If you can't do that almost year round, come to Florida. Come to Florida. Come to Florida. That we're literally, your communities are like resorts. Um, that one is a resort for sure. I know it is ridiculous. Yeah. So mine is just a refreshing story just to give us all like a little, like, oh, that felt good. Um, so as Jackie knows in a, in a somewhat collaborative effort, us coaches are working on a very big project of writing an article around the the fact that attribution is BS. Andrew, you probably love that. Say it. And can you, can you say a bad word? Say, Kevin said it? yes. He Kevin smoked on yes? stage at the summit last year. So, I mean, so I'm allowed to say it because I will, I you, get you, to, know it will. you get to do it once. Just like <gasps> when TV shows are like, you get two swear words a year. You know Wait, I think I'm going to save okay. mine then because Lord knows I'm going to uh, slip at some point. Okay. Um, <laughs> but the reason why I loved, like we're working on this project, it's been something that's um, come up a lot with a lot. builders lately across all of us. But I was talking to a new builder today. We're like deep in conversation about, you know, just overall strategy and theory and like how we assess data because they're like a newer builder of ours. And so we're kind of covering all the foundation again. And he said something and I literally had an audible like, yes. And it's because he was like, we all know attribution is BS. And I was just like, thank you. Because, you you know, in our world, like there's so many other factors and um, it doesn't tell the true story. And, you know, we're going to really dive into the nuts and bolts of that when we, when we finish our article, but I think it's just so refreshing to hear 
when people really grasp that and then how they can learn to integrate that into their storytelling of data. Because I think that's the missing piece that most people struggle with is that they're just trying to create a linear story Yeah, when the story isn't linear. And, um, you know, I was like, as I'm prepping for this article and, and grabbing all of these ideas from various places, I came across like the foundational things that we learn in middle school, elementary school, high school, whatever, of like the structure of a story. And there's the classic seven point structure of a story. And it's all about like the hook and the different plot turns and then how you get to the resolution at the end. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there, that's the perfect representation of what it's like for our customers because we hook them with an ad or we hook them with the product or whatever. And then they go into research mode, they visit us and then they start looking at resale. And then they come back to us because they remembered or they saw another ad about us. And then they go look at our competitor and then they come back to us because they remember they like our floor plan better or our prices were better. Or there was something that stood out better. And then they eventually make the contact and become a lead. And so it's just remembering like all the different things that play into that seven point story and how all of them have an essential role in the overall machine mm -hmm. between the, the why and the how and how they're all, as Taylor Swift would say, invisible strings. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. The analogy that we were talking I yesterday about that. was the, um, the Mississippi river, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. how it flows. It's not from one spring up North yeah. flowing South. It's, it's a lot of little springs along the way that feed it, that make it so powerful. And you can't, it's hard to quantify that and, and give that story. And sometimes we say, in, you know, in the online sales world, when looking at information, it's really black and white. You can say this occurred and this happened due to that appointment. And then here's where people, um, th this is how they went through the funnel, but in marketing, it's, 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 there's a lot of gray and that's yeah. where the BS comes from of understanding a good marketer knows that how many touch points it takes at times for a, a lead to become an appointment or a traffic to become a lead. And then just re analyzing be back traffic. How often are people coming back? And then just understanding to how long that customer journey is, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, mm -hmm. if, if they're not looking at that, you know, we're analyzing some and some are like, okay, first appointment, first time coming in, but then they first time we're seeing their data online. But you know what they told us is they went on our website and they watched every video for the last two months they didn't become a lead. They were just website traffic, but they watched mm. hours and hours of content. And that's not something you can kind of see in that data. So zooming out and yeah. having a better perspective of there's a lot of factors that come in is great because Andrew and I have had builders in the past who are just so addicted to yeah. that one-on-one -on -one comparison data. And we're like, mm -hmm. you, you got to zoom out. You, you're, you have the microscope, but you have to understand we need to back up a little more with how we're analyzing this and and not overvalue anything specifically. Yeah. I love the going back to the black and white and gray, um, except for the fact that we are all choosing to wear black today, um, which is ironic since we live in the gray. But I think making sense of the gray is, is completely essential to the process and, and making this making it make sense to other people mm. is essential. And I love the example you just shared, Jackie, because even today I met with a builder. Um, where there is a, a large disconnect of non-responsive leads mm. um, in their CRM currently, their lead volume is up, but there's a high number of non-responsive. We've looked at everything and there's no um, questionable red flags regarding spam leads or anything like that. And so we just started randomly opening up leads, opening them up, seeing what, what's happening underneath the hood. And they are, they're non-responsive to the online and to our efforts to reach out and to make contact, but they're responsive to our website. Mm -hmm. They're engaging, they're opening up emails, just not responding. They're going to the website and clicking around and having multiple visits. They just haven't made that next step connection yet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're almost waiting for the next key piece, next key hook, if you will, going back to the story reference to um, plot twist them into responding finally to an email. <laughs> Yeah. And it's that, it's that one, the story of the marketer being able to tell that story of like, look, we did our homework. They're, they're there. They're circling, you know, the trap basically 
Um, yeah. but I also think it's something where you, you know, now it's time to test experiments and test marketing and see what can bring them in that funnel and having the sales team be proactive and, and reach out to those people with what is the messaging that can work? Because I, I think that is incredibly important mm-hmm. and again, analyzing that, do we need to change our processes? If the timeline for leads becoming, um, reaching out to us is actually, you know, becoming larger and larger. Like how do we have to shift our, our focus and what layers do we need to add on? Um, mm. cause I feel like Andrew coming back to what you said earlier about, it's funny when people are in builder 20 groups, then they all kind of get right, the same right, idea. Right. Well, I had a call this week where it was like, oh, well they said incentives based off of um, buy downs. That's what's getting new traffic to our site. And I was like, okay, let's go into this. And just like that talk, we went through it and we're like, it's converting people in your, in your funnel. It is yeah. really not a big driver of new leads. So remember where the value is for mm. the message is important at different places of that, um, that Definitely. lead. And, and listen then, to what your customers are telling you. Yeah. Sorry, listen to what your customers are telling you because this particular builder, I'm I'm a fired up now. This particular builder that I was referencing, like we just did like a really cool campaign with um this particular very poignant messaging that they're super excited about. Mm. Maybe that messaging is actually capturing your customer a lot earlier in the funnel. Yep. And so now, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you have to learn how to really nurture that lead and focus on how to keep continuing that lead down the funnel um, and meeting them where they are. So that way they eventually turn into a sale. So there's still opportunity at wherever they are coming in, as long as they're engaging, as long as they're still interested, like the messaging might be working. It just might not be working to your expectations. Mm -hmm. I like that. Very true. That's an add in there. Um, Had a, had a recent conversation with, uh, with a business and we kind of had this thought of like, what would we do if there was no revenue? Oh, like, interesting. Instead of like, Hey, we're fine. We got cash flow for the next nine months. Here's our closings. Here's this, here's this, here's that. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like creates this sense of comfort. Yeah. Um, at least for those that are not maybe directly logged into everything or going like, Oh, actually like we like the stress is different. Um, I've only worked for a small business. I've only worked for like startups in the past, all these things. So that's kind of, I'm used to that. And that's where like, I see some things where I'm like, oh, then like this ties into attribution. Like, why is that too much work to like spend an hour to two hours on a single home listing or four hours? Like what will be the revenue and profit? What will be the profit of a home that sells for 500K? How mm-hmm. much payroll will that pay for? How much ad spend will that pay mm. for? And you're like, it's worth the 20 minutes. It's worth the 30 minutes. It's worth the extra effort. And then you go like, it's worth hiring someone additional to do this work. Cause what if that one person brought in two more sales ahead of pace, maybe not total, but like you're now accelerating sales. You're, you are saving money. Cause you know, however your financing works on, on building a home. So all those things that aren't, aren't really my expertise to know, but I do understand them. And so it's just this idea of like, if our revenue is zero, would we over index on attribution? Probably not. We'd be like, you know, like it doesn't freaking matter. We need sales. Like we got mm-hmm. payroll next Friday. We got to meet, we got nothing in the account. What actions would we take to do on those? I was just a thought. I'm like, Oh man, that kind of shifts your whole like priority. Yeah. Perspective. Right. I like that. Instead I like of like that taking it, you're yeah, just taking your success. Instead of taking your success and going like, we're cool. We're cool. It's like, we'll get rid of it. It sounds like some Instagram, TikTok sales trainer that's yelling at you. Like every day you wake up, you're garbage. Like you gotta earn change. your key for the day. I mean, here's, Da-da-da-da. Here's how you can think of it, Andrew. It and here's an, here's a thing I've been doing in calls recently. You know, it's June. It's the end of June when you're listening to this. It's, probably, it's still end of June, um, hopefully. But it's enough into the year to analyze what, what were your sales goals for the year? Where did you end for June? And are you going to hit it based off of your how your best practice is for the first half of the year? And that's really easy math. And that's one of those things of you have to pretend like you're not going to be as successful because you're historically... We're not right. Q3, Q4. So mm-hmm. if we have that mentality, what things do we need to pivot quickly and what can we change and how do we maybe market at a lower, more personal level that is not four hours a home, you know, if you have mass quantities, but how do we 
become more efficient. I actually had a builder who shared a project she worked on and empowering the sales two builders actually empowered the sales teams to, to get more aggressive. And both of them saw a significant increase in the return on investment for that strategy. So if you're thinking you're spending too much time on it, the marketers who changed from too broad to more specific are seeing success right now. I like it. So we got all this, all this good things in here. Well, let's go on to the news. Let's get moving. This one is incredibly important. It is the mm -hmm. incredible importance of the appointment to sales metric by our one and only Kevin Oakley. This was, um, so it's a little bit longer read, although it's still like seven minutes. So it's not that long to, to read this, but this was, this is, there's so much money tied into this. Like if you read this and implement it, like mm. pretend you have zero revenue, like here you go, like, let's go, let's get some sales. What was y'all's uh, biggest takeaways from, from this other than to read and implement everything you can in here into your brain, okay. like do it, just do it. Honestly, I think the timing of it is perfect. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we just released the, the leadership is killing your company mm -hmm. blog, which spoke about this a little bit. And this takes a section of that and really digs deep and really shows you ways to, um, focus, how to focus on that metric, um, and the importance of doing so. And I think the timing, um, couldn't be more poignant given the feedback that we've had and what we're hearing as coaches in, in the, uh, I don't want to say market cause it's not even necessarily the market. It's just like the, um, the environment mm -hmm. that we're in, um, the struggles that are happening a lot and the lack of growth that a lot of companies are seeing for that metric in particular. Um, and a lot of times I feel like we tend to make excuses for it um, at all levels of organization. And someone needs to take some ownership of it and really emphasize how important that is because without it, uh, every, the cookie crumbles. There's a, there's a meme from Simpsons where it's like Ned Flanders and he says, I've tried nothing and I'm all out of ideas. And I think that's, that's what you're saying, Beth is like, you know, sometimes we'll have calls and we'll see the builders who are progressing and doing better that are trying the new things and trying mm. things, or at least understanding the value of this. And they're creating strategies versus the ones who go, I'm just going to wait for the market to shift. No, no, no. You have to shift. You can't wait for the market because again, you can't control what happens. It's how you react to what happens. And so you need to be reactive, proactive and understand that. And this article has, has great ideas. If you're kind of like, but where do I start? But you should, you know, take it, run with it, try different things. And even just what I suggested of how do we, how do we hyper-focus on that metric? Because, um, statistically there are less leads in Q3, Q4. You know, we cannot, and I, and I hear that from leadership or people are, who don't understand. They're like, well, we just need more leads. It's like, well, let's, let's, let's do the math. Let's think how it can work. There's less. So we need to improve other things because especially if things are getting sticky and hairy and interest rates are high, the leads that are coming in are extremely valuable. You know, I talked yeah. about it of coins, right? We're, we have quarters right now. We don't, you know, there's, if a penny is in quarters, like focus on what can create a sale and how do we um, do that? And, and if they're that low in the funnel, like we have to value them appropriately. Agreed. Agreed. I'll go simple with my thoughts on it. This is good. Mm. So it's, it's fun. Like, I feel like I'm always looking for these conversations, like, okay, for this title or the marketing coordinator mm. or something like what, what are they getting out of this conversation and try mm. to like shift, like, well, what would they want to know? Like our DYC's thoughts on this, if they're listening, um, I think communicating your value is mm. not done well by most builders online like maybe yes. in person because it's also significantly easier in person to explain like here's our beautiful homes here's this hey here's actually our insulation look at this thing on the desk or actually there's a hole in the ceiling right here here's our insulation here's our competitors which one do you think is better during these uh, when you're discomfortable when you're uncomfortable with the heat waves all this stuff yeah um, but we don't talk about it online too much and when you're bringing up the the idea beth of the story of buying a home i was thinking back to my story of, of why we went and purchased a new home so I originally toured a home with Taylor Morrison, beautiful, beautiful properties. It's like diagonal from like my office and it was just out of budget. They wanted a really high percentage to start building. We still had our house, so we didn't have that cash just sitting around. 
So we kind of put on hold. We looked at existing because that would line up perfectly with seller home. And it's just significantly easier to do that. And I wasn't in love. And all the homes, existing homes, had a smell. Or like, hey, this home actually had a fire in the kitchen. It's good oh. now. Like, insurance did this, et cetera, et cetera. But like, y- here's here's the fire inspection report or whatever it was. I'm like, okay, cool. We were like, eh, I don't know. And then mm-hmm. I was coming back from Costco one day. And I'm like, let me just go into this community that KB is building, which is right next to Taylor Morrison, a little bit lower um, price point. As soon as I walked in, I'm like, I'm going to say my bad word for the episode. I'm like, damn, it smells good in here. That Chinese drywall. Just kidding. It's like the brand new, like brand new. He talks about that smell. smell. Yeah. The smell. The and smell. it still smells like that. And it's, we've been living in a house for five years with our toenails on the carpet and like mm-hmm. whatever we're cooking for dinner, Quint Lear's toenails on the carpet phrase right there. He needs a trademark mm-hmm. on that. But know, that's value. That. Like everyone comes to our house. We're like, your house smells so clean. What'd you do? We're like. Well, we'll be lit a candle, but like, it's just the house isn't 40, 50 years old with yeah. X, Y, Z Rotting and that's value, but that's easy content. As far as people then like you think about buying a house, they look at it, mm-hmm. the online data, just content, which Kevin talks about that and point number one, make it easy to buy from you and having more content. That's like, my favorite one. Your social content to me, is just an extension of content. You really don't have a spot for on the website, but they're going to go through your social content to kind of like, do I like this builder or not like this builder yeah. or something I'm missing and like somehow talking about the smell I, or whatever the smell uh the look and feel the even temperature on average throughout the home compared to an existing home all these things that we kind of take for granted and forget about mm-hmm. so i'm like oh that's like perfect for the marketing coordinator or whatever title is in charge of that type of content to really lean in mm-hmm. like what makes new versus existing and then us versus the other builder beth i remember back when you were with stylecraft back in the day your showers i think you had all tile and the showers versus an yep. insert. And you talked about that. And I, I, why I remember that, I have no idea. But like that's very valuable because it just elevates the home, even though probably your cost as the builder isn't significantly more. Mm-hmm, Where we mm-hmm. built the KB, we have paver, paver driveways, which is really nice down here in Florida. If you, if you freeze and everything, you don't really want them. But like that's a huge value. Like we got a nice paver driveway. It looks rich compared to a concrete driveway that's poured. Um, so all these little mm-hmm. things they could talk about. Um, I think I that's, think yeah. And that is the stuff that when someone is going through the funnel, like, and they need more, you, that you have that and you have that on hand and you're building up that confidence of you yeah. as a builder of, you know what you're talking about. You know, I, I mean, we talk about it with Tilson all the time. Like they know their stuff and people know they know their stuff. And by watching their stuff, they become more educated and, and they can they convert easier because they feel the confidence in the and purchasing power. So love it. Definitely. I love it. The next one here is super quick. Um, uh, well should be, I just lost my notes, but it's from Google and they are phasing out card payments. If you are a high spending, what they call a high growth account, what's fun. I didn't see where they have the criteria for that. So I'm just gonna say, if you're spending a lot of money per month, <laughs> A lot isn't whatever that's always, Google whatever. determines. Whatever, whatever, whatever Google determines. I would assume <laughs> over ten to fifteen, twenty thousand per month, they're going to try to push you towards either a bank bank payment or going on um, invoicing terms. So kind mm-hmm. of like net thirty. The challenge we've seen, um, and Jackie, I have a story for this. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll leave Matt out of it, but you could then be late for your payments. Yes. What happens if you're late? They turn your stuff off. They don't care. So if you're working with Debbie in accounting. And she has off Friday, and that's when you should have submitted something. Now it's late. That's on you, the marketer. So it just adds another layer of accountability and responsibility to make sure it gets done. Um, but we have quite a few builders that are on invoicing. There's really mm-hmm. no hiccup, but you just have to be on top of it. You can't just like, oh, shoot, change out the card in a few minutes. You can't even pay with a card. Yeah. Like, as far as a backup, there's no backup. They want the check <laughs> or a wire transfer. Yeah. Whatever, maybe ACH, all that stuff. I mean, the positive with that we've seen some builders for Meta and Google change the invoicing, right? Is at the end of the month, that was the whole total versus 500, whatever increment we set it at. Um, and with credit card payments. But yeah, we have seen with Meta, with Meta specifically. I wish people, if they're listening, watch the video. That song came on the radio today oh, and I did it. Is that um, Nine at the Roxbury? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're done. That's okay. <laughs> people listening are like, what is happening over there? What's in that um, 
Yeah. In terms of getting people who are responsive, yeah. make sure when you set that up, you do have like a point person. So if something does go wrong, you know, who to contact is, is probably the best next step with invoicing because you don't want Debbie in accounting to take a vacation or if someone swaps in the role, not knowing that yeah. that is extremely time sensitive. Um, cause that will hurt marketing that will hurt sales when you think it's making your life easier. If, but if you you know that you will not be as proactive about it, maybe don't proactively go that route. If that's CYA cover your, cover butt. You. if you need 10 calendars to make sure it's paid, then just have mm -hmm. 10 calendars. Totally cool. There's no shame in that. Notebooks, Monday to work. <laughs> invite yeah. everyone. Yeah. Get that recurrent. <laughs> there we go. Monday.com recurring, recurring yeah. tasks. I use the, the I've point. been using the Google task. Not oh, going to lie. I've mm. been, so I use a, a thing called tick tick like TikTok, but tick tick.com. It's like Ugh. a super, um, very basic task management has all the tools I want. And then I'd write everything down on my notebook as far as how I manage my day to day tasks. Projects are different, but like what I'm supposed yeah. to do today, that's how we do it. Um, let's see. Ooh, we gotta, we gotta get moving here. Get Next moving. one up from Zillow. Zillow always has, you know, they have, they have some great content. I guess yeah. they know a few things about they know a few things. They just have on. a little bit of data, just a little bit. Like the power, the power of data. Power Homeowners data. list while buyers hang back, pushing inventory higher. Yeah, we've seen that. I read that really weird. Um, what does that mean, Beth? What does it mean? It means what it means. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's, this is something that we've Good seen ha like slowly start happening. And so I don't think it really comes as a surprise to any of us. Um, I think what's interesting or where people have difficulty rationalizing it is like, well, if they're listing, don't they already have a house that they want to buy? So how is, you know, like, when does it equal out a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I think just for builders, it's a, it's a good reminder. And we've been talking about it on our coaching calls, every single call, yep. do your competitive analysis, see yeah. what your market is like, what things are selling in your area at what, what price point. And if you don't have access to the MLS, the people who wrote this article, Zillow, they have a lot of access right on their website. Yeah. You can do like right on the fly, pull up the things that are pending, pull up the things that are sold in the past 30, 60, 90 days, and just get a feel for what the realities of your market are, is like right now. Um, y y going back to what we said earlier in our conversation about, you know, that life cycle of your homeowners listening, I'm sorry, your customers listening to what they're trying to tell you about where they are in their process. Um, that same builder, we did a quick on the fly competitive analysis, um, just pulling up Zillow and looking what had sold. And it was like, are they willing to build or are all of the things on the market right now that are pending or have sold? What was their, like, how long were they listed? Mm -hmm. You know, like what are they quick closes? What is the story here? Because you might find out that your demographic is all looking for quick, 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 quick. And they're just not willing to to build right now. And this is going to be a longer game for you. Yeah. Um, but the more that you become aware of what's actually happening within your market and to my point earlier of getting ahead of it, so nothing comes as a surprise, then um, you're going to be better equipped to tell that story in the gray as a marketer. All 50 shades of the gray. So there you go. Um, that's a bad, terrible joke. Terrible joke. Not even funny. Um, what's interesting is looking at like my market. I'm in Tampa. And they have this beautiful chart on here. It's like market favors mm. buyers. And so I'm, mm. I'm not in, you know, Tampa, if you've been down here, you have the, towards the beaches where I'm at, um, mm -hmm. my home, I was looking. okay. So the community I'm visiting Epperson, which is an hour and a half from me, you could mm -hmm. buy four bedroom, three bath, 3000 square foot home from like the four eighties brand new, that same home brand new where I'm at from the seven hundreds, like it's totally different market like an hour, an hour race. So Tampa would be both of those, um, sub markets combined. So looking at this, I was like, okay, is there a correlation between what Zillow is saying? The market favors buyers, sellers, or it's neutral and the new listings change over year over year. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, if there's more listings year over year, there's more inventory that mm -hmm. should imply that it favors the buyers in Tampa. It does say that in other markets, like looking at Denver, Colorado, it favors mm -hmm. the sellers. So that would mean prices are staying pretty strong. There's less decreases, but there's more, there's 24% more listings year over year in Denver, and there's 24% more listings year over year in Tampa. 
opposite kind of circumstance of who it favors. But there could mm-hmm. be like little nuances as far as maybe there's more like what is Tampa, what is Denver actually. So I mean that is interesting. Um, which so it kind of goes city to city, market to market. Well, um, and it's also interesting to, as a new that. construction builder too, like your price point is important too. So if you're like, oh, okay, so many more, but we're at this price point. Like if you're struggling, if you have three different product types, like do competitive analysis at those three different levels too and see where they're at. So I think that gives you a better outlook of, do you have a lot of resale competitors? Is it mostly new construction? And then how do you, you pivot and how many of homes in yeah. a time frame sold at that price range as well? So yeah. And know your value. Like we talked about yeah. in Kevin's article, like know the value. Yeah. And I, convey the value. I have a request from, from Zillow. If the Zillow gods are listening. Zillow. Yeah. Hey, knock, listen. knock. When you put a chart this big, don't just copy and paste it. I oh, want yes, I want that it. header to stay because I keep having to scroll back up and be like, oh, what's this column again? I put it in Excel when I was looking at what I just talked You're about. You're so funny. Wow. Yeah. Wait, did, did you it. copy and paste it into Excel? I copy and pasted it. I changed the format. Yeah, see, that's so, too much. Like, um, what, just what, no, put it on A here. normal human isn't going to normal do that. Normal humans don't do that. I, that was, yeah, that. That's sorry, okay. Everybody, that's, I'm an analyst. Um, let's see, what's next? Let's do some current favorites and hates. Um, how about Beth? Your name starts with B. My name first. starts with B. You're A though. You're A. Um, let me go, let me go first. I'll go first. So, then. Failed logic. Yeah. So oh, I was great. tired this morning, y'all. And of course, hmm. like on the day that I am like feeling really tired for some reason, I think it's summer, my kids home, you know, it's just par for the course. Um, mm-hmm. but of course the latter half of my day was like way busier. I had two meetings back to back followed by the podcast. And I was like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to make it to be awake and alive during the fun podcast? So I can be as fun as I always am. Obviously yes. you got it, Andrew, that dang like Ember this. mug. That is get the creative. bougiest thing I have. Yeah. It's agreed. Bougie. That is Don't everything I didn't know I needed. Shout out Kevin Oakley. Yeah. And Carla for the design that yeah. thing. It, it got me through guys. It got me through my Ember. two and a half cups of coffee. It's nice too. Cause if you have like a tiny, we talk all day, right? So if you have a tiny itch, on throat, just like honey, hot water, chug that sucker and it'll stay warm. What all day. temperature do you set your Ember? So Ember mug, I um, degrees. Degrees. Have to look it up at the highest degrees. degree. Beth's talking like about an Ember mug that face. has a little heater element in it and it's battery powered. It's Bluetooth. So you could set the temperature that you want it to go to. It charges pretty quick, and I think it lasts two hours. Um, yeah. Like, but if you have a, mine disconnected from my phone because I offload my apps, so my bad. I'm, I'm not even customizing the temperature. Oh, <laughs> I just don't care. Just I, as long tent. as it's warm, yeah. that's all. And I'm I not know. having to pull a typical mom accidentally leaving my coffee in a microwave. I'm happy. And that ruins the taste of it. Awful. And this, this tastes yeah. good until you're done with it, which is yeah, which is great. There you go. Bougie. I like it. Ember mug. We should um one sponsorship. Thing, um, sponsorship um branding fail we need the logo on both sides i don't know if that's an option but ember it should be an option carla's gonna listen to this she's gonna fight you what if i hold it like this you don't see that it says do i see anything that's funny that's weird and then we need to put these in our shop because i'm gonna need like five that's true i'll I'll go i'll knock mine out real quick so i went to jamaica a few weeks ago Um, it it was a great time it's a great time everyone here can can go to jamaica too um it was probably the most fun I've had on a international trip mm-hmm. as far as culture goes. Mm. Um, and we were still like at a resort, but going from, we flew into Montego Bay, then we went to the west side of the island, which is Negril. And I was like, okay, the people driving, they're going to be nice because they have to be. The people at the resort, they have to be. But like on average, like customs, Jamaican customs, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, you, you put Chick-fil-A to shame. Like you are like such a positive vibe. Like what in the world? This is wild. Then keep Good going. Like, and then like our, yeah, our driver had an issue with his car. Like, I'm like, this is, this fits. Like I got the fuse, man, that all the stuff. Um, I side night, I love their language. Cause I have no idea what's happening the whole time. And it's a Creole language. So it's like a combination of like 10 different languages. Mm. It was, I'm like, I could listen to this all day long. This is, this is fantastic. But like the, like, I truly felt like this is a totally different culture than the United States. And not just like you go to Mexico and it's like this, they're very kind of, at least my experience, very salesy and kind of pushy to, yeah. to do things. Jamaican, like, like, yeah, we're okay. Okay. 
bless up that all stuff. I'm like, cool. Like, I think you meant that. Like, not just like you're just saying that. Mm-hmm. So we want to go back. It was it was a great time. 10 out of 10. So that was a favorite. Another favorite is a humble, humble brag on my, is he listening to me? My oldest son went in a Fortnite tournament Aww. in person. He's done stuff online so and he plays cool. well. So he did it. This is his first time. He plays on PS5. Is any? I'm sure there's some parents listening to like, oh my gosh, my child, they're just on Fortnite all summer. It's like camp Fortnite. They're at home. I'm at home. Blah, blah, blah. Feel bad. Um, I don't feel bad, but that's like, it's his thing. He loves gaming. Like it's truly like his, he, my cousin he is a professional it. gamer. It's a oh, thing. That's pretty cool. So this, this dude got second out of 40 kids on a console, which I guess is not normal. Um, whatsoever. I've always been a PC gamer. That's just when I did game, I don't game right now. Cause I just don't get much out of it mentally. Like I just, Oh, cool. I want cute. Um, but he of course loves it. So now he's like super pumped up. And my wife was like, do you I think he needs to drop out of school. I think he needs to like be gaming all day. He doesn't need, he did, like, this is our life now. Now I know what it feels like to have like kids that are good at ath- athletic sports. She was being sarcastic with that. That's her personality. Um, but I'm like, oh, cool. This is, this is fun. Like, that's awesome. It it's like fun a, to see someone with an extreme passion. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Well, I'll, like, I'll change. You could go for the Air Force. That could be his job later. Drum there you pilot. Go. Ugh, got dark. Maybe not that one. Don't do that. My cousin goes to like these huge, like worldwide tournaments for the game that he's a pro in and he's on a team See. and he's like sponsored and his parents bring fat heads of his face to the That's tournament. Amazing. Embarrass him. Do it. Oh, people yeah. love people stop and take pictures and we're like, can we get in with can your your PBN's yeah. mom? I feel oh, like God. it's like modern day Queen's Gambit, you know, where it's yeah, like oh, yeah. Much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty so pretty good. much. Yeah. And I was trying to go to Texas for a Fortnite tournament. That's like the I don't know, some big one or something. And he's like, can I have that for my birthday? And I'm like, I don't know, bud. I look at it. I'm like, all right, the flights are like 60 bucks round trip. It's like oh, $40 yeah. to Make get in. Oh, yeah. Make a family vacation. Like, this is Come on, dad. Not and he's going to remember that forever. Like, that's going to be like, he's going to be yeah. telling his kid that story. Like, my dad Bragging was so friends. weirdly into this when I was a kid. Yeah. That's a long day. That is a long day. All day. If he's listening, day. he's probably like, this is me. Yeah, going. It's an ask me in two seconds. Well, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll change my story time because yesterday, um, yesterday was a holiday. And my son had the day off. My husband took the day off. And um, my son, I don't know if you can see, there is a, what is it called? A piranha plant from Mario on my oh, yeah. desk back here. Because my son brought it in. Oh, He's no, like, we I... built this for Father's Day. You have a Lego rose. So here's another Lego plant. It needs to stay here. I was like, oh, okay, kid. I'm going to hide it eventually. It but um, no, we leave it. It's awesome. I know. I, yeah, it's, it's very funny. He pretends to eat my fingers. Um, but we... Introduced him to N64 um, Mario yesterday. Yeah, buddy. It so good. blew his mind. He's like, do you want to sit and watch video games with me, mom? I was like, because my husband was playing. So yeah, sometimes it's about one, just sharing your interests with other people. I mean, you have passions like that rubs off on people and you, and you get excited for when other people are excited. So I think that's- uh, It could be anything, I think. Like we as humans, if someone's really into something, you could like see it and it's authentic. You're like, man, I'm, I'm excited for you. Yeah. Like you're not saying like, I love that for you, which is usually sarcastic. I just love that for you. That's great. Love that um, for you, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. How do we feel about the last season of Bridgerton? We didn't talk about, how do we not talk about that? Just kidding. We don't have to talk about we it. Don't but that was, that. I, I did But if anyone that. wants to, to send Andrew a email about their feelings Same. for it. Well, yeah, well no, you listen, we know you listened to the end of the podcast. And did you read the book? The only people that are mad are the I ones that read the book. I can't read. Okay. Um, Lady whistled down. Oh, they could do some editing on that stuff. Oh, a little weird. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Anything else we need to say? Summit. How's the summit? How's it? Summit's uh, good. We we're still got yeah. tickets. Oh, we have a few. We have a few. I think we're still we okay. we filled the role of the marketing manager. Sorry, everyone who's listening. And then we Ooh, still are also nice. looking for an online sales coach. So if anyone Excuse thinks that they they got what it takes and want to try out, go go for it. So. I think we're always looking for great marketers. It's kind of yeah. like unofficially, like if you're a great marketer or you like on my side, I, I manage the team of analysts. We do a lot of training. And so you don't have to necessarily be 10 out of 10 I winning the four-day tournaments. But like, I, if that's your thing, like. Yeah. Can I tell you about email? one person who emailed? I think so. Us yeah. about oh. this. Question. Okay. One this person. This is a good story. Well, now I feel like it's gonna be a bad story because you hyped it up. But one story, one, they emailed, the email subject was like, 
Carla Tootin's favorite applicant for the so-and-so position. And we were like, confidence ballsy, keep going. Like what are you? And then, and then just the, like put in very specific details about the company. And it was, it was such an interesting application that I wanted to interview them. But by the time we like could find a time, we actually found a different person for the position. But overall I was like, oh man, if only we could have gotten you in quicker. But, uh, we, sometimes I feel like unique things you do in applying definitely have you stand out as my, I think I've told the story before my husband was a recruiter. And I think in 07, the New York times put, you know, time of the year was everyone. So in their resume, they said put like 2007 times person of the year. So when That's you hilarious. get curious and Googled it, it was everyone. So it was like a really funny conversation you starter. Know, I think I think said person should like do a social media takeover at the summit. And that's like their thing. Cause obviously they're relevant. They're good at finding information. They kind of know the inside knowledge. Mm. Oh, I don't know who this person is. I haven't seen the resume. So you might be like, no, 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 not this person. I have no idea. Um, but that'd be a lot of fun. Kevin, Mike, what do we think? We'll see if anyone we'll, to be determined. we'll do some guest star takeovers. Beth, you didn't say a bad word. Um, now just you have to say that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Next time. You'll get it next time. It's okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay. Well, I never know if we say the outro. Just say thanks Ever. for listening. Thanks A recording will be put in. Insert yeah, put in. here. Insert here. Smash that button. Smash that like button. <laughs> That's it. Comment, share, like, follow. Click the link in my bio. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good time. one. See ya. San Diego.